In this episode, we're going to show you how you can use thermal imaging to get ahead. Roswell Flight Test Crew, here today to take a closer look at how thermal imaging works and point out a couple of instances where it doesn't, at least not the way you'd expect. If you're new to our channel, click subscribe now to keep up with the latest on drones and thermal imaging. First of all, what is thermal imaging? It's exactly like visible light imaging, either with a camera or our original Mark I human eyeball, except for the spectrum of light that we are seeing. How do we see the world around us? Visible light is either emitted or reflected by objects in the environment. As Sir Isaac Newton discovered, every color we perceive appears in the visible light spectrum, which is on display every time we see a rainbow. However, there is invisible light that falls outside this spectrum. What thermal imaging does is allow us to see a portion of the infrared spectrum. There aren't any colors we recognize in the infrared spectrum, so we get to choose what the world looks like by selecting a color palette inside the camera. Different colors represent different temperatures, ranging from hot to cold. This is what I look like in the white hot color palette. Notice that my face is white because you're seeing my body temperature at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. My clothes appear to be darker because they're masking a portion of my body heat. This is what I look like in the black hot color palette. And this is a color palette called Iron Bow. Now that we understand the basics, let's have some fun. If you ever watch spy movies, you probably think thermal imaging can see through walls. It can't and I'll prove it. I'm standing on the other side of this door, but you can only see me after I open it. However, thermal imaging is very sensitive to temperature changes. So, if I touch the wall right here for a moment, and then take my hand away, you can see the heat that I've left behind. Glass allows visible light to pass right through it, but it blocks thermal emissions. Scary, huh? You would think that if thermal imaging is good for anything, it would be revealing which of these metal canisters contains hot coffee and which one contains ice water. But as you can see, they look the same on the thermal imaging camera. Just so we're clear, there's nothing tricky going on here. These are plain metal cylinders. They aren't insulated or anything. The reason we can't see a difference is because just like a mirror reflects visible light, the metal surface reflects the surrounding thermal energy, rather than what's inside the container. In order to tell the difference, I put a piece of electrical tape on the back of each one, which absorbs the temperature inside and reveals it for the camera. Firefighters like thermal imaging equipment because it allows them to see right through smoke. Smoke is like glass in reverse, it blocks visible light, but allows thermal light to pass right through it. In order to demonstrate how thermal imaging can see through smoke, I brought along some props to do a practical demonstration. Stop! Wait. Not in here! Alright, let's take a look now at how fog is different from smoke. I'll use a block of dry ice and a bowl of water to create artificial fog, and let's see what happens. Fog blocks both visible light and thermal emissions. We don't have nearly enough fog here to completely obstruct the view, but you get the idea. What questions do you have about thermal imaging? Put them in the comments below, and we'll do our best to get you an answer in a future video. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, and if you want to learn more about drones and thermal imaging, go ahead and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Fly safe.